to his people. Father, I thank you right now. Every ear is anointed to hear the word of God. Every heart is good ground to receive the word of God. All necks are outstretched to hear your voice, to hear the word of God, to hear the messenger behind the message, God. And we just declare the Holy Spirit has the liberty to move up and down every aisle, in and out of every road, touch, heal, deliver, set free. God, we thank you right now for answers, deep answers, God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the things we prayed for in secret. You will reward us in the open. And, Father, we, we receive it and we thank you in advance for answers, God. Oh, for your maker of heaven and earth. God, we put a demand on the anointing. This is not an hour as usual on Wednesday night. This is an hour where we come to receive from heaven. Your kingdom come. The will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it's in Jesus' name and Excel Church said, Amen. go ahead and shout about that. Glory. Hallelujah. Listen, before you take your seats, go ahead and find your two or three people. Love on them. Encourage them. Let them know they're special to God and especially to us. Glory to God. Bible, slip your hands up. Uh, ushers can bring you one. Glory to God. We want you guys to follow along with us. We thank God for our first-time visitors uh, taking time out of their busy schedules to hang out with us tonight. Uh, I believe every Wednesday night, every time you get in front of the Word of God, it's a divine encounter with God. It should be taking place whether it's personal or corporately. I just believe that God speaks 24-7 for the ear that's inclined to hear what he has to say. Amen. So if you need a Bible, slip your hands up. We're going to finish this series tonight. What have we been talking about on the um, in our Wednesday night Bible studies, what we've been talking about is what it means to live a happy life as a believer. What it means to live a happy life as a believer. A lot of times we discovered in this series what we call happy is just a circumstantial good event happening in our lives. And, 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 and we say, man, we're happy. No, you're happy because you bought a car. <laughs> yeah. you, you got a raise. You got a job. You, 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 you. Something, something advanced you personally and you're happy. But happy is not the same as being joyful. It's not. Happiness derives out of a event. Being joyful derives out of your heart for God and what God has done and what God did. When he sent his only begotten son and Jesus was hanging on that cross, he said, it is finished. Uh, I, I'm telling you, every person that, that, that named the name of Jesus, that received Jesus, you have received, you have received the son of God. Therefore, joyfulness should be in your heart always. Always, <laughs> always. There's no circumstance or situation higher than the joyfulness of God that should derive in your heart. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Now, do things happen? Yes, they do. Jesus said, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said, look, you're going to have trouble in this world. He said, but be of good cheer because I've overcame that. Again, he's saying, listen, I've overcame anything you can encounter. And I know it's hard sometimes to disengage from from uh, unfortunate circumstances that happen in our lives. But, 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 but Paul said, look, don't, don't sorrow as if you don't have any hope. Yeah. What's the hope? Jesus, the blood of Jesus is always alive. And if we understand that as believers, we're going to live a happy, joyful life. Amen. 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 Now, I'm not talking about synthetic happiness. I'm not talking about synthetic deliverance. I've been there, done that, where I said God has delivered me from something and God hadn't done nothing. I just felt good and I felt good to say it. But when God truly delivered me from the inside out, when I said it, there was a joy that took over my life. And when you walk in it, there's a joy that takes over your life. What is it? What is it? A guy can say, man, I, that bottle used to be my God. That marijuana used to be my God and I've overcame it. Man, that is a, that is a, that's a um, rejoicing. 
that, 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 that no man should be able to suppress, no circumstance should be able to suppress. Why? You know that you know that you know that Jesus did it. Amen. Somebody said Jesus did it. Jesus. So we're going to finish this series off tonight. Uh, <clears throat> let's go to uh, the book of Psalms, uh, verse uh, uh, chapter 118. Psalms 118. Now, we discovered last week that, uh, you know, for, you know, <laughs> I used to have relatives that, that, you know, and friends that grew up very religious, you know, very, I've seen some very religious people like, you know, like a pumpkin in front of your front doorsteps stops the anointing of God or something like that. But Psalms 118, 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. What did we learn last week? We learned last week, God owns the days. Yes, There's no day on this calendar where we can, where somebody can come to me and convince me, hey, the devil owns that day. Well, watch out. No, 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 no. God owns the days. This is the day that the Lord has made. And because God has made today, guess what? Inherent in that, he's going to make tomorrow. He said, look, you need to rejoice and be glad in the fact that the, heaven, the, the maker of heaven and earth made this 24 hours you're about to partake of. So don't let anybody tell you that the devil owns a day. He does not own the day. Do you hear what I'm saying? So you got to ask yourself about today. Did you rejoice? I'm working on something now, uh, the power twins. And the power twins, the, the, the power twins that I'm working on is gratefulness and thankfulness. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Listen to me. When you're grateful, nobody has to tell you to rejoice. When you're thankful, nobody has to tell you to rejoice. So I had to ask myself, hey, when you're not rejoicing, Derek, nine times out of ten, you don't have a revelation of, of, of how thankful you should be. You don't have a revelation of how grateful you should be. That's why people say, look, I want to know the future. I don't. I don't want to know that in six months I'm going to go on a cruise and I may get food, I, 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 food parts. I don't want to know that. You couldn't even handle the inherent nature of your future. That's why I said, listen, you just take care of this day. Because there's enough in tomorrow. You need to rejoice in this day right here. And let me say this to you. Where there's no rejoicing, there's no thankfulness. That's a hard, that's hard. Where well, there's no rejoicing, there's no thankfulness. Oh, man, I'm just so grateful for my spouse. I'm so grateful for my wife. I'm so grateful for my kids. What do you rejoice? I'm not talking about celebrating. I'm not talking about that. I'm not I'm talking about celebrating the first step. You're happy about that. But when you look at somebody, uh, you should be, especially a spouse or a child or a parent or a sibling, their presence should draw out rejoicing in you. And sometimes I just look at my wife and go, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you. Sometimes I see her going, 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 going. I say, God, I'm just thankful for my wife. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just thankful. And, and, and never say anything to her. What's happening? I'm rejoicing. Why? Because I'm thankful. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? So if we're going to live a happy life as a believer, you have got to know that God owns all the days all the times, and there's no situation, no circumstance higher than a believer who has a revelation, I must rejoice daily. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you'll live a stress-free life. I'm learning to live a stress-free life. <laughs> well, you want to you live a, a, a life full of stress and, and, and no happiness? Think you got to do everything. Think you have to do everything. You're going to be stressed out. There's some days, there's some days I, I, at, at 4.59, I turn church off. I turn ministry off. I turn it off. Why? Because I got to recalibrate. I recalibrate. I rejoice. Go home. Watch this. Do this. Do that. Go play basketball at the basketball court with her. Go do something, you know, just something of nothing. But I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. I'm refueling. You know, it, it, <laughs> we're going to be talking about this in 2019. And it's exploding in this church, but, but 
XL Church, we're going to balance the Word of God and the method to carry it out. Because people come to church on Sundays and Wednesdays, some people Tuesdays, Thursdays, they get the Word of God. But the method on how to, how, how did Jesus go from 12 to, from that to 120? How did, how did we get to 3 billion? The method was learned. What's the method? As a believer, I should be, at the book of Acts says, they went from house to house daily method. What is that? Talking about this Jesus, talking about this Holy Ghost, talking about it. So we're going to be talking about it. Why? Because I'm a firm believer. When you're witnessing Jesus Christ and you're seeing people receive Jesus Christ and you're telling testimonies, when you're doing that, that's the method of what we should be operating as believers. But just wanting to get word fat and not witness to nobody in 2018 and set goals for 2019 to build something you're doing or make more money. Listen, a wise man yeah. wins souls. Yeah. That's method. That's, yeah. that's the method to the Bible. So, 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 so we can stand up here and just shoot shotguns every Sunday and every Wednesday and people go out during the week and won't say nothing to Jesus, about Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. Because the method has been lost. But the word, the message every Sunday and Wednesday, it comes strong in churches. But watch us. Watch us. There's a reason why 22 people join this church in two weeks. There's a reason why people are coming to this church. You know why there's a Because people want to excel in God and people want to excel in life. And I'm telling you, sheep like to see sheep doing good and advancing. What does it do? It fortifies our faith. It fortifies this God we believe in. When we see one another enjoying this life, Rejoicing because God is good. Sharing this word with people. When we see that as sheep, we want to do the same thing. Same thing. And I'm going to tell you, a rejoicing will grow in your heart like nobody's business. When you see a guy fall to his knees and cry yes, yes, yes. after receiving Jesus Christ for the first time, receiving that Savior. But if you don't understand the method of what we're doing, you haven't even seen that. As a matter of fact, he hasn't even come up this month with the stranger in your conversation. I'm telling you, if you want to be happy, you want to be joyful, you have got to start sharing Jesus Christ with people and the goodness of God. We cannot hold this no longer and and, and, and focus on the word, and the word is important, but the word without the method, we just have a church, we just have people in the church, but nobody is witnessing going from house to house daily, but we are going to do it. You know why? The young people want this. That's why they congregate at Starbucks. That's why they go hang out together. That's why they sit around and talk about it. That's why they sit around and do that. They want, to, listen, you got to have more than preaching on Sunday. You got to have relationships in the church. And the quickest way to do that is not under the word of God. You're learning method up here. The quickest way to do it is to fellowship. And if there's no fellowship with, 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 with a lot of word, people are in church and out. And we're failing. And we're failing if that happens. So, 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 so we're going we're gonna to tackle that thing. I know it's a rabbit trail, but man, I, I'm, 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 I'm serious about it. And my wife is a hundred times more serious than I am. You can't be a minister of the gospel and you can't win souls. You can't share Jesus. You, you, you're not, you cannot call yourself a minister of the gospel if you're not opening your mouth telling people about this awesome Savior that we have. Amen? Amen. So Psalms 128 verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. 118 verse 24. That's, is that where I am? Psalms 118 verse 24. This is the day that the Lord, this is the day that the Lord has, the Lord has made. And, and, and we got, and one translation says you got to choose sometimes to rejoice, which means everything is not going to be hunkadory every single day. That means you got to keep the weather in your back pocket. You can't let the rain, you can't let the weather out there to dictate how you carry yourself as a believer. You keep the weather with you. That means you're in control of it. It says choose to rejoice. Why? Because God made this day. And I know everything that God does is inherently good. 
And God doesn't put cancer on nobody. God doesn't put people in car wrecks. God doesn't make people commit suicide. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And anybody that tells you that God needs the devil's tools to get our attention, get up and run out of the door. Why? Because John 10, 10 says, look, I came that you may, he said, the thief came to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came that you may have a life and have this Zoe life, have it more abundantly. So the clearer our understanding is of who this God is and who makes the days, every situation, every circumstance, we're not callous, we have feelings. God is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. We're, we're not hard-hearted, but I do know when I encounter something in ministry, I quickly catch myself and go, wait a minute now. God, y'all already know how to handle this. Y'all already got an answer for this now. Now, Derek, it's, it's 10 o'clock. Don't let this wreck your day. Choose to rejoice. Yes. Yes. Right in the middle of it, choose to rejoice. Well, my son's in jail, choose to rejoice. Boy, that's just, and, 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 and non-believers will look at you like you're crazy. Yes. Hey, don't you know your son just got locked up? Yeah, I'm praising God, I'm rejoicing. Why, why would you do that? Well, won't you go read Acts 16 when Paul and, si Paul and Silas got locked up, bound and changed. What do they, what do they choose to do? They choose to praise God rejoice and we're going to see tonight some traits from that little story right there somebody say god owns the day, god owns the day. <clears throat> glory to god <clears throat> glory to god okay let's go to act 16 act 16 Guys are journeying, you know. Philippi come across a lady who's a fortune teller, and 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 the guys in that city uh, are kind of pimping the lady out. So as she, as she, uh, you know, as she, 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 as she tells people's futures and all this kind of stuff, she gets money, you know, for doing that. And and Paul and Silas come through, and 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 and, and Paul literally cast the demon out the lady. But the religious folks didn't like that. <laughs> they don't like that. So let's, 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 let's pick up the story here in Acts 16, verse, um, <clears throat> let's go to verse, where do I want to go? I want to read this whole thing again. Okay, we'll just start at verse 17. <clears throat> ah, verse 16. And it came to pass as we went uh, to prayer, a certain dancer possessed with a spirit uh, of, of, of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, a little fortune teller. But she made money for her masters. Verse 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these men are servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit. So a lot of times when you don't have joy going on in your life and it's rough on the job, it's rough uh, in school, it's rough in the house, sometimes you just got to get away and realize, listen, this is not a physical warfare I'm in right here. This is a spiritual warfare that's got my husband waking up on the wrong side of the bed, irritated with everybody in the house for no reason whatsoever, and it's really not your physical husband. It's just a spirit, it's a spirit of division is trying to come into your house. You got to speak to it. And when you do that, what are you doing? I'm, I'm contending for my joy today. And it's not going to be messed up because I didn't fix you a cup of coffee on time. <laughs> Now, your husband is not the devil. I didn't say that. I said the spirit of division tries to come into your marriage. I said to the spirit and commanded thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to come out of the lady. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters, the pimps, who was taking advantage of this lady, when her masters saw that, the hope of their gains was gone. Oh, man, Paul, y'all messing up my money. And they caught Paul <laughs> and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble, not your city, your money. Verse 21, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans, verse 22, and the multitude rose up together against them. 
Never let money be your God. Never let money be your God. <clears throat> Against them, and, and the magistrates rent their clothes off, tore their clothes off, and commanded, and, and commanded to beat them. Think of that. Man, you don't mess my money up, we're going to whoop your tail. Verse 23, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, <laughs> man, they had put it on them, they cast them into prison, uh, charging the jailer to keep them safe. Remember that verse. Remember the jailer. To keep them safe. Verse 24, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet uh, <laughs> fastened to the stocks. <laughs> Boy, he must have shoved them, kicked them, and everything else. Verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas employed spirituality in the midst of being locked up. In the real world, they say, hey, you have one phone call to make. And what is that phone call for? When you make this phone call, you need to make this phone call and see, and you better hope the right person answers this phone. Why? Because your, your, your bond, your bail is being dictated by this phone call. If you can understand that, Paul didn't really need a phone call. They made a spiritual call. Yes. That's good. And if you're going to maintain your joy and things are not going your way, and this is a bad day for Paul and Silas, the situation and the circumstance is not favorable towards them. <clears throat> hmm. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Defend your joy with prayer. When it don't look right, when they're going to lay off 45 people tomorrow, you don't know if it's you, your wife, you don't even know. Listen, just pray that night. That's all you got to do. Just pray. Don't nurse and rehearse what are we going to do if. God is not in the if business. Jehovah Jireh is going to take care of you. He's seen it coming before you did. Listen to me now. At midnight, they prayed and they sang praises unto God. Listen to me. When people in the world get locked up, whoever is on the other end of that phone for them is really like their God. Amen. What? <clears throat> it's really like their God. What should we do when we run into a situation? We should do what they did. Pray and give God praise. You sing praises to God. See, sometimes to maintain your joy in God, you just got to break out and start praising God. Don't text nobody. Don't call nobody. Explain your situation. Just go off into praise, and you'll watch the chains, like Tasha Cobb says. You'll watch the chains begin to break off of your mind. And, and suddenly, verse 26, there was a great earthquake <clears throat> so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Somebody say, the atmosphere changed. The atmosphere changed. See, prayer, prayer now, prayer now, is, 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 is dictating to nature. Let's see what nature does. Let's see what the earth shaking does. Let's see, let's see how prayer employs nature to give freedom. Watch this. Even, even nature bow down to prayer. That's why you can speak to a storm and say, go that way. Don't come this way. <laughs> Don't go near my baby's house. Don't go into that house while everybody else is panicking. You better speak to that storm. Why? Because prayer can defy uh, uh, nature. So the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately evidence of freedom appeared. All of the doors were open, and everyone's mans were loose. Not just open, but guys, I mean, what? Man, stuff falling off of us. What, what, what's going on? Man, this is prayer is powerful. And the keeper of the prison awoke out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing the prisoners had been fled. Now, what this saying, he's Barney Fife. <laughs> you don't pull your gun, you shot yourself in the foot. You got the, the, the guy's nervous. They charged the jail to do this, do this, but we're, we're going to see, we're, 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 we're gonna see what, what, what God was up to uh, with this jailer. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. For we are all here, verse 29. Then he called for a light, and it sprang in, and, 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 and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? 
See, here's why you have to endure and believe God and rejoice in certain situations. Eyes are not on you. Eyes, God's eyes are on somebody else. And when you come out, they're watching you. They're watching the goodness of your God. They're trying to figure out how in the world did you dance out of this place when you got laid off? How in the world did you do that? And they call you right back. And you got an easier job, better shift, more money. And I'm still in this boiler room. How did you do that? How must I, how must I serve this God that you, that's what's happening right here. So a lot of times people shrink when pressure's on. So I know when pressure's on, everybody's watching. Don't watch me, watch my God. Watch my God. Watch God defy. See, a lot of people wish misfortune on you when you're going through stuff. And that's a shame, and that's terrible. But you know what I say? Watch God. Watch these chains break off. Watch what praise does. Watch what it does. It's going to defy everything that you think is going to happen. Watch what praise does. And that's what's happening uh, right here. Let me get back to my notes because I, I, I want to read you something out of this story. <clears throat> Glory to God. Listen, prison is often a noisy place. And a lot of times your soul is often, it can be a, a noisy place. It, it's, this stuff can be going on with the wife, the baby, sickness, money, finance. You're trying to figure out how to do this. And, and, but prison is often a noisy place. And prisoners may complain about the food or scream to be set free. Guards often yell at the prisoners. But I'll tell you what, I doubt that anyone ever heard this particular sound before when Paul and them prayed. There in the middle of the night, in the pitch dark, Paul and Silas sang praises to God. Why is that so significant? Environment shouldn't dictate your praise. Man, this traffic, oh, God, I never, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You still praise God. Environment don't dictate your praise. Jail doesn't dictate your praise. Nothing dictates your, it, 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 it shouldn't do it. You should praise God always. Why? Because you know, you know that every situation and circumstance is 100% temporary to the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. So I'm not going to lose my faith. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith to maintain this joy. But listen to me. <clears throat> so, so prisons, they're noisy. And this unusual sound caught the attention of every person in that jail. What unusual sound? Praises to God. It's going to catch the attention of your neighbor. It's going to catch the attention of the, the, your coworker. It's going to catch the attention of your girlfriend. Watch this, and it will catch the attention of a religious believer when you do it. Religious believers get uncomfortable when you do this. I mean, why you, what's a, no, no shameless now. What you mean no shameless? Brother, I'm rejoicing. I know God is bringing us out of this. <clears throat> so this unusual sound caught the attention of everybody in that jail. The other prisoners, the jail keeper too, they knew there was something different about these two prisoners. Because they praise their God, listen to me, in the middle of their trouble. You want joy in the Lord? Praise your God in the middle of your trouble. You want a stress-free life? Stop trying. The Bible says, cast those cares over on God. You're not built to carry that. You don't have the capacity to carry that. You don't have the capacity to understand that death right there. So stop trying to carry it. Cast those over on God. If you want joy in the Lord, praise God in the middle of your trouble. Trouble can be income taxes. Trouble can be a doctor report. Trouble can be, uh, they say your kid was just playing basketball, he sprung his ankle and you're on the way to him. Trouble can be your wife in the little fender bender and you go in there. Don't, don't worry. See, anytime, let me say this. If your wife has a fender bender and you're more worried about the car than her safety, get your priorities in order. If she's more fearful about what you're going to say when you show up, rather than, man, he's here. I'm, I'm, I'm confident now. Rather than you walking up looking at you, 
What in the world? What were you doing? Who cares? Are you okay? So praise God in the middle of, the middle of your trouble. trouble. And we may wonder why Paul and Silas could sing at a time like that. Didn't they know that they were unfairly chained up and in prison? That's key. They, they, they had a great revelation. This is not right. We don't deserve this. We're just doing the work of the Lord. And they weren't bitter about it. They weren't bitter about it. They could still continue to praise. Paul, listen to me, this is key for your joy. Paul and Silas could praise God because they were filled with faith and with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. See, when you come across something, either you're filled with faith in the Holy Spirit or you're not. <laughs> That's just the way I live my life. I come across something, either I'm filled with faith in the Holy Spirit or I'm not. And how I handle that situation or circumstance is going to tell me, are you filled with faith in the Holy Spirit or not? Because if I get too deep in it, I begin to try to handle it myself. And that is not faith. It's not faith. Acts 11. Now, when God is speaking to you to go deeper in his word, listen to me, it's not always to teach somebody something. <laughs> it's preparing you for something. Preparing you for what? Make sure you're deep in faith, deep in the Holy Spirit. And I imagine he was doing that with Paul and Silas. Why? They were wrongfully locked up. <laughs> They're just going through, man. We're just going through. I see this lady taking advantage of, uh, men taking advantage of, taking advantage of folks. I say something to her. Next thing I know, man, I'm locked up. But I guarantee you, and we'll see right here, Acts 11, 24, about Paul. <clears throat> For he was a good man. <clears throat> Watch this. And filled. Somebody say I'm filled. 11.24, and filled and full of, full of the Holy Ghost, he, for he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Listen to me. You, to maintain your joy, you got to be full of faith. The fullness of faith is going to combat the troubles of life. Just how full you are. And please don't get so high and mighty to the point where you think you can divide the scripture that Jesus told you about. That you're going to have troubles. See, the thing about believers, we think we're not supposed to solve problems. <laughs> that's not the devil. That's just get your income taxes done. You didn't do them on time. The deadline is here. And now you got a penalty going on. Boy, the devil is busy. No, you were not busy. You were not diligent. As a believer, we can't just... I don't know what we think. God, this cosmic God, he's got it all under control. God's like, no, 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 no. Listen, sometimes you bring trouble on your own self. I can't believe my life is messed up. Well, you start dating three men without any kind of counsel from covenant folks, and all three of them took advantage of you. Well, I tell you what, this church don't care about nobody. Well, you start dating them in secret, but you want us to rebuke him in the open. It don't work like that. Ooh, we're going to take five people. We're going we're to put $5,000 together. Don't tell nobody in the church. We're going to put $5,000. Secret prosperity. We're going to put $5,000 from you, 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 25. This guy told us with these gold coins over in Iran, you would put $25,000, and in 30 days, we're going to have a million dollars. Don't tell nobody now. And, 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 and you, come back, you come back on the fifth week and go, where's that guy at? Let me write the church. I can't believe you got these kind of people going, oh, who, who are you talking about? I don't even know this guy. You little secret Santa. <laughs> You're trying to prosper in secret. Now it's done went south. You want us? You want us to chase the guy? No, it doesn't work like that. Amen. You need to be full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. You can see this guy's a clown. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with this guy. I know nobody ain't going to get no million dollars from no $1,000, a $5,000 investment in 30 days. I am not going to deal with this. How can you see around the corner? You're full of faith. You're full of the Holy Ghost. Do you hear what I'm saying? Somebody say, I'm full of faith, and I'm full of the Holy Ghost. 
Say it again. I'm full of faith and I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I always rejoice. How can you do that? Because my faith is my spiritual currency. My God is inherently good to me. The vengeance is his, not mine. I don't have to, I don't have to fight it. Why? God is taking care of it. So what do I do? I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. So you go, you go in a hotel room and it's not like you want it. And you're going to be there for five days or whatever it is. Try to get the thing, the room you want. But if, it, if you get the medium room you want, don't spoil the whole week. Because if you start to rejoice and check out, they go, hey, 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 here's what we want to do for you. We're going to give you, a, all paid for, you and your husband, a trip to Jamaica, da 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 Flights paid for, room paid for, this, that, and the other, for your inconvenience on this day. Now, how did you get that? You rejoiced on day one when the sheets wasn't pressed like you thought they should be pressed. So sometimes I tell my wife, let's just calm down now. God's got this. Let's just calm down now because we're going to do more damage than what we're looking at here. Damage to what? Our countenance on this thing that we're trying to do. Do you hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> <laughs> Ooh, Hebrews 11 Hebrews 11 my God you go out with friends and everybody got to have a manager I, my God just man just my gosh I just and the whole night has went south sometimes you just got to Sometimes you got to realize, man, I, 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 me and my wife go back and forth sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, hey, this is, this is, we don't eat meat or nothing like that. But if we stop and get some fries from Chick-fil-A, you know, they give you four big waffle fries and then on the, on the top, then they got little crumbs under the bottom. <laughs> but if we do that, if we do that, and, and, and something goes south or whatever it is, and they, uh, she doesn't like, and I don't either. Don't take my ketchup and put it in my fries. I don't want, I don't want, the, I don't want the plastic pack from Japan that all these hands has touched, touching my food. I, I, I don't want doing that. But you get it, and you see that. You see that happening. I remind my wife, this is fast foods. We're not at Roof Chris. We're not at Houston's. We're not there. This is fast foods. What are we doing? We're protecting one another. Protecting what? Our joy. Our joy. Because, man, I, it, 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 it'll wreck your whole day. Condiments on your fries. God Almighty. <laughs> it was just, so he's full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 11, uh, verse 1. Now faith, somebody said now faith, now faith, is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. And it provokes us to rejoice. That's why one of my favorite, I, I end my prayers with, Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do right here. What do you mean thank you in advance? I'm thanking him in advance, but I'm going to rejoice because I'm going to thank you in advance. This is already done. And when I do that, I rejoice. I rejoice. There's nothing better for a believer to come up on something they can't handle. God told Marty. They don't have the capacity to handle it. And God goes, it's time for me to step in now. Just step on back. But don't step back and shut your mouth. Step back and, and live, live by faith in the situation. That's your spiritual currency. <clears throat> this has everything to do with rejoicing and living in joy. I'm telling you what I know. <clears throat> Paul and Silas were sure. Listen to me. If you're going to rejoice, live a life of joy. Paul and Silas were sure that God had not forgotten them. Who starts to sing in a dark prison and praise God? Who does that? I tell you who does it. People who are sure my God is right here. He has not left me. He will not forsake me. And I don't care what this trouble looks like. I'm praising God right in the middle of it. Why? He's right here. He's right here with me and Silas. Why? Two of us are gathered. 
And it doesn't say he's, he's, he's over here. It says he's in the midst. Yes. What is that? I'm, I'm, I'm right in the middle of you. Yes. In the middle of what? I'm telling you, step back. Let me take on the trouble. Amen. Now you keep rejoicing, keep singing. Let me go ahead and take care of the trouble. And guess what? Earthquakes, doors fly open, men are running. Now here's the thing about it. In a prison with federal prisons breaking out, this KD bar the door. Paul and Silas, you better run. Run for what? This is a move of God. God just didn't break the doors down. God touched every man's heart in here to, 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 to see his goodness and not touch anybody. That's why they had to tell the jailer, calm down, you okay? This is a move of God right here. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> You're going to be okay. I've been in a prison riot before. Uh, when I was in North Carolina playing uh, basketball, and I got smart, we, we would go out to the prisons, a federal prison. I remember this, this guy, some of the guys that, 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 that are a student in basketball went to NC State. I think his name was Sidney Lowe. I think his name was Sidney Lowe. But anyway, he was out there, and his brother was out there. His brother was real good. He would remind everybody that he's good, and his brother is here, but I would be there if I wasn't here. And he would remind you of that. But anyway, I was on the free throw line, and, and guy about six foot five is talking trash, and I'm talking trash. Sometimes you forget where you're at. <laughs> As a believer, sometimes you forget where you're at. You forget where you're at. You think you're in the hallway in church getting smart with somebody. Brother, you, 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 you are on Atlantic Boulevard, and this guy don't know you, your God, or nothing. You better shut your mouth, pump your gas, and get in the car. Sometimes believers forget where they're at. They don't know who they're talking to. Everybody ain't going to turn to cheat. But listen to me. I'm on the free throw line, and, 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 and the guy looks at me, and all of his teeth are rotten and sharp and edged, and, but he's a big dude. And he looks at me, and he says, look, I eat. He said, he said, I eat little guys and little guys like you in here. He said, shut up, little man. I'm like, man, I'm six foot. He, this guy was six, eight. So I didn't think nothing about it. And my buddy Pee Wee, about six foot four, a timeout is called, and in slow motion. I see Pee Wee, we're, we're walking to the bench. I see Pee Wee break away from the five and push his hand on the ref's shoulder and takes a swing at that guy. And the last time I seen the prison, the, the gym, the floor, the windows, was the last time I seen it because I didn't know where I was 30 minutes later with knots on my head, going to drop down in my eyes, blood clot. My mother-in-law looked at me and said, you need to go to the emergency room now. Pee Wee to this day has migraine headaches from it. Why? Pool balls were flying. All, all, all I could remember was this little blue mat. You got a little blue mat. If you ever went to PE, you got a little blue mat right here on the wall behind the basketball goal. All I knew was try to get behind it, do, do something. But all I could hear was, <laughs> and it, 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 it was on my head. <laughs> I came out of the thing. My buddy Mike, Mike, I said, man, I said, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I said, we need, we, we need to get out of here. We need, we, we need to get out of here. And they was looking at me like, oh, boy. Do we tell him what he's looking like or do we? But my mother-in-law didn't hold her tongue. Did she? She said, y'all need to get that boy to a hospital. What are you thinking about out there? So, so, so this is a miracle. Because <laughs> these guys are glad to be free and they ain't killing nobody. Paul and, Silas, Paul and Silas were sure that God had not forgotten them. You as a believer got to know God has not forgotten you. Yeah, but I'm laid off. God has not forgotten you. Yeah, but I'm in this thing. God has not forgotten you. Just wake up and rejoice. Just wake up and give him praise. Wake up and be grateful in the midst of it. Wake up and be thankful in the midst of it. And people are going to look at you like you're crazy, but what are you trying to do? No, 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 no. I'm changing the atmosphere of this thing. I'm changing the, the atmosphere of this thing. How? through prayer and rejoicing that my God will take care of me in this situation. Never go in the court scared. Go in there scared if you're lying. That's, that's when you go in there scared. Now, now you're lying, be scared when you're going to. But if you're like, you know what? Hey, I'm going to be truth before God. God, you're going to go before me. The angels are going to go before me. I'm going to deal in truth. Now you go in there brave. But lying? Be scared when you stand in front of that judge. Why? Because that is your God at the time. And what he says will dictate your whole life. 
And they were filled, Paul and Silas were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were certain that God would not allow, watch this, anything that was not best for them to happen to them. Galatians 5. One of the fruits of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is joy. Think about that phrase, fruit of a spiritual act is joy. The fruit from a spiritual act is peace, long-suffering, Galatians 5, 22, uh, 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 patience, kindness. Think about that. Fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit. See, when you walk in the fruit of the Spirit, rejoicing and joy is inevitable. Why? The Holy Spirit is in you, and the fruit of that should be peace. Should be joy. Should be long-suffering. Man, when is it going to happen? Should be long-suffering. I said last week, I don't put time limits on God because I set myself up to be disappointed. Who, who do you think you are? <laughs> God, let me tell you something. By tomorrow, I need such, such, such. No, no, Lord, I receive your favor. Because I just may be shooting long and it could happen in the next minute. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my little natural tail out the way. You hear what I'm saying? So you got you, you to gotta hear what I'm saying. Sometimes you say, well, God, by now, and, and, but, but by next week, I want, and, and, and you're like, okay, no. And God's like, hold on now. I want to do it for you in the next minute. Yes. Get out of my way. Yes. Lord, I just received what you have for me. Yes. And that's the end of that story. You start putting time limits, you're going to get disappointed. You're going to blame God. You're going to blame the word of God. You're going to say that it doesn't work. Why? Because you thought that you control the time. You don't control the time. The day is the Lord's. It's his. He controls that. So just be thankful, be faithful, and here's what you do. Rejoice that it has already happened to you. Show me a man that's rejoicing, rejoicing with $10,000 with the credit card debt as if he's got zero. Listen to me. He's cutting the time down. Show me a man who's waiting for ideal circumstances to pay off that debt. He's stressed out. He's worrying. He's trying to make money. He's trying to do this. He's trying to do that. And don't realize it doesn't work like that. Rejoice as if. God has already brought you out of debt. Carry yourself as if God has already done what you believe in him for. And I'm going to tell you this. You will rejoice. Why? Because now you're holding that baby. Like, well, who are you holding? I'm holding my baby. What, what do you mean you're holding your baby? I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. I'm thanking God in advance for what he's going to do. Yes. Instead of sitting in the corner somewhere, letting Google run me crazy, I'm going to rejoice that God is already doing what he needs to do. Every cell in this body lined up. Every organ in this body lines up. Every blood vessel in this body lines up. Everything lines up. I walk in supernatural wisdom concerning my appetite, supernatural wisdom concerning my nutrition. God, whatever is not of you that's going in his mouth, reveal it to me and take it away. Why? Because I'm thanking you in advance for what you have already done. It's rock a baby. And people look at that lady and think she's crazy. She ain't crazy. She just looks like Paul and Silas. She knows her God. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, when I don't rejoice, I have to ask myself, uh, my, I ask myself a question. When I, when I know I should be rejoicing, I'm not rejoicing, I have to ask myself, do you think God's going to do it or not? Why are you so hesitant to rejoice? Why are you trying to fix everything with this? Do you think God is going to do it or not? <clears throat> Glory to God. <laughs> Now, I know we've been talking about being a happy Christian, and that's a part of the series, but here's what's fascinating to me. Happiness was not a fruit of the Spirit. Why? Because we said earlier, happiness is circumstantial. Things go well, you get happy. But it's not a fruit of the Spirit. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit, and joy derives from the Son of God that came to save the world, that died on that cross <laughs> for our sins. That's, that's where the joy derives from, right there. Happiness will come when the baby comes through the womb. Happiness will come when you get your bonus check. Happiness will come when you close in your house. All that stuff, God said, listen, enjoy the fruits of your labor. 
but happiness is not a fruit of the spirit. <clears throat> Joy, we've discovered, is different from happiness. Happiness comes when things are going good around you. <laughs> you're happy. Like when you get a birthday present, man, you're happy. Oh, you may open it up and, man, I don't want no more socks for Christmas. <laughs> Grandpa's like, man, y'all bring another tie. A skinny tie from Burlington Gold Factor. Oh, I don't want no silk tie. <laughs> Somebody come up here with a golf membership or something. You come up here with a golf set of clubs or something. All oh, y'all working? I raised all y'all. <laughs> you make 100, you make 80, you make 65, you make 75, you make 50. Y'all okay, come up with $800 for some clubs and a membership for me? Man, hey, <laughs> I want to be happy here. <laughs> you get a birthday present, or you hit a home run, or your little baby, your little anchor biter, your little. You, you know, your, your son hits a basketball goal, uh, uh, he scores a touchdown, you get happy. Joy comes when things are right on the inside. A home run ain't got nothing to do with the inside. <laughs> Closing on the house ain't got nothing to do with the inside. It's all external stuff that's coming towards us and making us feel good. You're happy about that, but joy in the Lord comes from the inside. Listen to me. Joy is inner gladness and peace. Inner gladness and peace because you believe in Jesus. <laughs> I was in the backyard yesterday. I woke up yesterday morning and Holy Spirit say, uh, uh, walk outside and just sniff the air. <laughs> Man, this is the craziest thing I ever... T- Walk outside and sniff the air. So I went in the backyard. I sniffed the air. I, I smell gas. I came back in. I said, I smell gas. I said, I, said, I smell gas. So I picked up the phone. I called the company. I said, hey, uh, I said, hey, what's going on? I said, um, <laughs> I didn't know this, but when you say you smell gas, they are deploying folks ASAP. So I said, I said, smell. He said, hey, he said, I'm in the area. I, I, I'll be over there. So when he got over, I said, man, why y'all react real fast when there's a gas leak. He said, yeah. He said, that pipe, they run under 10 houses on your street. He said, that's why we, we, we got to move fast. So he comes out there, looks at the thing, he said, yeah, he said, right here, your, your, your valve on your fire pit, it's going bad here. He said, he said, he said I'm, I'm going to go ahead and fix it for you. I said, well, how much is that going to cost? He said, well, the service call is $60, and this part is $179. I said, I don't care what it costs. Get this gas leak fixed and get it now. I said, I always try to steal on top of my stuff. And the Holy Spirit says, shut your mouth, stop lying, and get back over there and tell him what happened. <laughs> and he, and he, 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 was, he, he was a white dude, traps sticking up out of his shirt, tats everywhere. He, he worked out, chest flexing. I'm saying to myself, I don't want to hear nothing about no Holy Spirit. Are you serious? She said, no, he said, you took the credit. He said, go, go, you go tell him what happened out here. <sighs> you know, God tell you to do something, you beat around the bush. How long is it going to be? <laughs> I wonder if I need to put a cover over that thing and say, what, 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 what are you thinking about? I'm trying to look some up and see if he's even going to talk to me. He said, no, 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 no. He said, see, 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 I'll be about, uh, about 15, 20 more minutes. And uh, I, said, I said, man, I said, I, said, I said, the funny thing, the funny thing about this, and, and the Holy Spirit said, no, ain't nothing funny about it. <laughs> I said, my God. I said, I woke up this morning, and God told me to come out here and, and, and sniff the air, and I sniffed this, this, this gas, and man, this, I, I smell this, and, 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 I, and, I, and I went in there, and I called your company, and, and you guys uh, came out. And uh, he didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. I said, man, Lord, what was that? <laughs> So he fixed the thing, this, that, and the other. And the Holy Spirit said, tip him before he get finished. I said, God, told him I'd be more careful. So I, I turned my back to him. You know how I did when you, when you want to do, when, when do a managed tip. <laughs> you want to you know, do a managed tip, you, you. See if I can get the smallest thing out of here. So, <laughs> so I said, man, I ain't got number hundreds and twenties in my pocket. Holy Spirit said, tip him $20. I said, I walked around and said, hey, I said, look, uh, God loves you. And uh, I he said, nah, man, you, you ain't got to do that, man. You, you ain't got to do it, man. 
So he took it. <laughs> he took it. And I said, hey, man, I said, I said, I said, you know, I said, I said, I watch football on Thursday night. Sometimes I got two or three guys over here, man. I want to get this, this outdoor grill. You know, I want to get it right. I said, I don't eat meat. I do vegetables and stuff like that. He said, well, he said, let me look at it for you. So he looked at it. He said, I need to clean your, clean your thing out. So he cleaned it, the, uh, the little burners off there, fires it up. He's there. He said, man, there you go. And he turns to me and he says this. I see that thing again you said. Wow. I said, what? I said, about the grill, the guys watching. He said, no, 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 no. He said, your God told you to come out here and check a, Jesus. Check a thing. And, 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 I, and I said, yeah. I said, that's how it goes. He said, man, he said, I'm just, he said, stop drinking. He said, man, I just, he said, I don't have a grandma, grandpa, my grandparents are dead. He said, lost all my siblings. He said, I got my wife now. I'm trying to turn my life around. He, and he said, he said, you see all these shooting going on in Jacksonville? He said, so glad uh, I've stopped drinking. I don't go to that stuff. I sit at home with my family and with my wife, blah, blah, blah. And he said, he said, man, you're just, just a good dude, man. You, you're, just, you're just a good dude. And I said, I ain't going to say nothing about no whole Jesus and nothing like this. I, this is crazy. <laughs> I said, man, you know Jesus? He said, yeah, man. He said, yeah. He said, yeah, I know Jesus. He said, I gave my life to the Lord. I think he was 18 or something like that. So I said, I said praise God, man. I said, listen. I said, I said, find your church and get in there, man. Find your church and get in there. And uh, a good Bible for teaching church. I said, find you want to get in. And that was the end of the story. Until I got in the garage. And the Holy Spirit said, from now on, he said, did you notice I kept your mouth from inviting him to your church? I said, that's okay. He said, because from now on, you make sure Jesus is in front of your church invitations. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. <laughs> so, so many times we'll take off with, well, my church, my, and, and your church may, but, but we should take off with Jesus first. Then on the back end, it may not be your church. Yes. God may tell you to tell them, find your good church, man, in, in, in the area da, 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 uh, uh, that you can plug into. Man, that is, God is just so good to us, man. He's just so good to us. So joy is inner gladness. It's peace that you have because you believe in the finished works of Christ. Joy doesn't change when our circumstances change. This is key now. Happiness will. Hey, man, we're going to close. Uh, we're going to have your keys. We'll be out here in an hour. And, uh, you, man, you, 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 you got your best friend. You, you, you got the camera, everything. Hey, get me when I get my keys now. And, and, and they come through the door and go, oh, boy, I don't know. You, you, I hate to hear this in a business deal. I don't know how to say this. Oh, boy, my God, is it that complicated? Now, watch how happiness changes. We're trying to close. It's going to take us three more days to close. Man, I got people going. I, 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 I'm trying to. I'm going to lose. I got to pay another. And it's like, oh, 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 see, happiness will change like that. But joy is inner gladness. If you're living a life of joy as a believer, when they come through, you just rejoice and go, God, you must have something good for me. Amen. Now, the inspector got to come back out here again and find, what's going on, find out what's going on in this house. And you don't slow this thing down. I receive that. And I thank you in advance. Why? I live by inner gladness, which is the joy of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Happiness can change at the drop of a dime. Woo, girl, we're going to party. It's Friday, da, 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 and you go to lunch. Where's my direct deposit? You get, did you get your check? Yeah, I got mine. You didn't get yours. No, I, I, I didn't get mine. Or you get your check, and it's $200 short. This company is so awesome. Oh, it's great. You, you, I'm telling you, it's the best company you ever want to work, and your check is short. Watch your happiness shift. Why? That's what happiness does. It's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a flimsy tree when the wind blows. It just goes with it. That's what happens. But joy is inner gladness because you know God has got it taken care of. And this is what we should be walking in as believers. Amen. Amen. Joy is deep down inside of us. Joy is deep down inside of us. No man should be able to touch your joy. No dollar amount should be able to touch your joy. And in parentheses, I got dollar amount, north or south. What's that? Hey, man, if you go ahead and cut this corner, I go ahead and do, uh, just, I just write it up like this, and that'll be an extra $2,500 uh, for you, da, 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 da. No dollar amount, north or south, should touch your joy. I, I, I don't need you to manipulate nothing to make me feel good. My joy comes from honoring God in my work, okay? So don't cut no corners, don't write nothing different. I, I don't want nothing to do with that kind of stuff. Why? If I take from one man, another man's going to take from me. No way. 
joy is deep down inside of us. And out of Paul's and Silas's joy, given by the Holy Spirit, they praise God. They praise God. God told them, might have been more careful. Woo-wee! Oh, loud. <clears throat> In your notes. <clears throat> God's greatness never changes even when our circumstances do. Write that down. God's greatness never changes even when our circumstances do. God's greatness never changes even when our circumstances do. Make that a part of your daily confessions. God's greatness never changes even though our circumstances do. And that job comes and says, we're going to lay you off. God's greatness doesn't change because you're laying me off. Number two, our joyful praises invites God's power into our lives. Our joyful praises invite God's power into our lives. Paul and Silas rejoice and pray, and that, that prayer and that rejoicing, it invited God's power into their lives. Our joyful praises invite God's power on our situations. It will invite it on it. Get on it, God. His power would get on the, it would get on the case. Listen to me. At the hour of the night, the jailer took Paul and Silas. What's the impact of this? At the hour of the night, the jailer took Paul and Silas, and guess what he did? Washed their wounds. This guy's been impacted by two men in a dire situation who decided to live for God. So a lot of times we're afraid to live for God in front of folks. We're afraid to praise God in front of the state trooper. We're afraid to praise God in front of the judge. We're afraid. Paul and Silas weren't afraid. And it impacted this jailer. Remember, this is the same guy that, get in there. Get in there, Barney Fire. That's how he was. Get in there, guys. And the power of God changed him. A spiritual act happened here. He washed their wounds. Right away, he and his whole family, this guy, this jailer, was baptized. Do you hear what I'm saying? They were baptized. They were filled with joy. They became believers in God, Acts 16, 26 to 34. They became believers in God. Notice that while it was two men, while the two men were praising and singing, singing, singing praises to God, that the ground started to move, God shook the earth on behalf of those he wanted to save. Don't always think you're, when you're in a situation you're rejoicing, don't always think it's about you. It could be about your sister that you've been trying to get to church forever. Your mother, your, bo- your brother, your daughter, your boyfriend, your husband, or whatever it is, and he's seeing you going through something, and you react with an upside-down kingdom. What is that? I'm supposed to be sad, but you're rejoicing. They look at that and go, that's strange. Now, either he's going to latch on to it or he's going to run out the door. Look, <clears throat> the walls tumbled. The metal scraped against the metal. The chains fell to the ground. The heavy doors swung open, can't you hear it? Paul and Silas could have easily run into the darkness of the night and escaped. But here's how we know that these two men would listen to the Holy Spirit. They didn't run. The Holy Spirit, watch this. The Holy Spirit let them know that God did not cause this amazing thing to happen to them, being thrown in jail. The Holy Spirit revealed it to them. How do we know? Because the guy got saved. God said, hey, hey, I need you to stick around for this. See, a lot of times, a lot of times you hear people go, God did this, thing. God did this, thing. and they say, oh, 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 wait a minute now. No, 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 no. See, if you just walk the story out long enough, what you'll see is there was a bigger picture. There was a bigger picture behind this, and God was always driving us through the Holy Spirit. Amen? I'm gonna, 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 the record is scratched. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Got too much. So I said, boy, you got two sets of notes up there? Man, I got, I got, I got the printer prayed tricks on me back there. I just wanna find this real quick. Oh, Lord. 
He's the one you brought up. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. In the end of this series, I, got, I, got, I got gave you these things. <clears throat> Dep- depression signs. We've talked about joy. We've talked about happiness. Listen to me. If you're going to live a life of joy, you've got, you, you got to know how to detect these things. <laughs> here's, here's, here's signs of depression. People show lack of interest and enjoyment in activities that used to bring a sense of happiness to them. You show lack of interest and enjoyment in activities that used to bring a sense of happiness to you. That could be telling you something. <clears throat> your soul could be sick. Your spirit could be sick. And you don't even know what's happening because you've disengaged from what you used to love. That's a sign. Number two, you become restless. <clears throat> you become restless or you're sleeping all the time. You should have sweet sleep. You shouldn't be restless. You shouldn't be sleeping all the time. You're trying to sleep off the, 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 the layoff. You're trying to sleep off uh, the child support. You're trying to sleep off the bad report. You, 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 you watch it, you'll find yourself in depression. <clears throat> Number three, your appetite changes. You're either eating too much or too little. Something is, something's going on here, and you're trying to get rid of it. You, 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 your appetite changes. Some people lose weight. Some people gain weight. Man, I'm gaining all this weight. What's going on with you on the inside? What's going on with you? You carrying a care or something. You're trying to eat your problems away, and you can't do it. You should be rejoicing that God has already healed you. God has already done the thing you believe in him for. People who are on the, on the brink of depression, they think that sleep helps them re- escape the reality. The reality will be remaining when you wake up. But if you, if you, you think that sleep is going to help you, People that's on the brink of, we're talking about protecting your joy, you got to watch out for frequent spasms of unwarranted irritability. It's, it's, it's frequent. And it doesn't make sense. You wake up irritated. The least little thing fires you off. Something is going on with you. You don't have inner gladness. <clears throat> You're relentless in displaying your agitation. And you call it a long day at the office. <laughs> Listen to me. <clears throat> you gotta watch out for the devil. He's cunning in this depression area because you, you can have exhaustion that, you, exhaustion that you can't even explain. You, you can't even put your finger on, why am I so fatigued? Why am I so exhausted? You're trying to carry something that you shouldn't be trying to carry. <clears throat> you exaggerate goodness in your life. <laughs> in other words, you tell a little lies about your goodness. You're trying to convince yourself. <laughs> You're trying to convince yourself. And I've seen guys, you, you, I've seen people do this. For years, you convince yourself that you're doing something that you're not. I said in the council session, I'm pastor. He looked the guy right, right in his eyes, and he told him, you're not anointed, you're not rich, and you don't know how to make money. You're broke. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> He's talking to another pastor. I said, man, what's going on here? Because the guy's trying to swindle and all this and slick. To, he said, you, you, you're not anointed. The guy was borderline depressed. He would exaggerate his, 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 his fruitfulness and all that kind of stuff. Oh, gosh. When you're borderline depressed, it's hard to concentrate. Watch this. Or make sound decisions. It's hard to concentrate. You can't make sound decisions. Some people need a little liquor to make a sound decision. Some people need a little weed just to make you, let, let me just calm down. I, I had a guy tell me this, a believer. He said, he said this years ago, he said, he said, he said, yeah, I gave me a little sip just to take the edge off. You don't understand my job. I said, take the edge off. I said, that sip of liquor want to take your life. That's what it leads to. That's what it wants to do. The Bible says it's a ruiner of kings. Takes away your status. That's what it wants to do. <clears throat> so it's hard to concentrate. It's hard to make sound decisions. It's like, man, you... 
are you sure you're supposed to be doing this? Are you sure this is God? Because you're not making sound decisions. You're exaggerating what God is doing. What's going on with you? <clears throat> Listen to me. Suicidal thoughts or actions, cut yourself. Take, take 10 pills. You see, you gotta, you gotta stop that kind of stuff. Stop trying to manipulate your spouse and folks. I took eight pills. I, you didn't take no eight pills. You took two of them. But you start doing that kind of stuff, suicidal thoughts and actions, cut yourself and all that kind of stuff. Thinking a lot about death and dying. I've woken up in the middle of the night and we was trying to get this doggone church off the ground. Woke up in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit was wake up and pray. I'm walking through the doggone family room and, and the devil said, go ahead and kill yourself. I said, what? <laughs> Just go ahead and kill yourself, man. I mean, come on, hey. I mean, come on, just go ahead, go ahead and do it. And I'm walking through like, I know you're not talking to me about that. But how many people know, if you are weak, he comes along, say, I'll tell you how to solve your problems. Go ahead and, what was I trying to do? Trying to carry something I wasn't capable of carrying. And you'll find yourself with those kind of thoughts. You're feeling down throughout the day until something good goes, happiness hits your life. As soon as that happiness leaves, you're back down again. And this is the next big deal, the next big deal, the next big this, the next big. You exaggerate what God is doing in your life. Why? You don't want to face the reality. What's the reality? You're not doing anything. You're suppressing. You're so, you're, 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 your esteem is really low. Your spiritual tank is really empty. You haven't spent time, any time with God, but you want to exaggerate what God is doing. That concludes this series. Were you blessed by the word of God? Amen. Amen.